you could join us on Art House. I'm Melinda Akinlami. On today's episode of the program, we have some lady love from one female artist to another. <music> From experimental and transdisciplinary approaches presented by Odun at Co Gallery in Lagos. <music> to the backstory of Faith's artistic process as we visit her Ikorodu Gallery. I'm really looking forward to sharing their various works about with you on the program. We'll get the details in a moment. Do stay with us. Primitivism, identity often sought for by members of Western society, exerts a limitation and barrier against the progress of creativity. A former student of the Yaba College of Technology and the University of South Africa presents her latest body of works, which involves drawing, sculpture, installation, and more at the Co Gallery in Lagos. Artist, academic curator, and cultural practitioner Odua Rimolade presents 4939, a solo exhibition featuring an immersive new body of work that extends her exploration into unseen spaces, spatial dimensions, and superfluidity at the Co Gallery in Lagos. It's uh, generally related to research that I've been into for so long and my engagements with space and in this case also numbers <laughs> and um, a lot of it is about orientation and um, navigation of how our internal spaces uh, relate with our, uh, the impact that comes with it. This is the artist's first uh, solo exhibition here in Lagos in 10 years. Uh, she's been uh, exhibited around the world and participated in her residencies abroad, and so it's her first major project back in Lagos um, uh, since uh, 2014. So it's exciting to see uh, the works come together and to see such a diverse grouping of, of artworks. She's a colleague that uh, has been very persistent and hard working, and um, these we can see in what she's presenting in this particular uh, exhibition uh, themed 39, uh, 49, 39, and um, I wouldn't want to go into uh, what the uh, uh, that is the theme is all about. But uh, what is actually obvious here is that um, uh, we can see that, um, like she's been described, she's a multidisciplinary artist, and we can see that through the work she has uh, presented here. I think they are in five series. And um, she actually uses her uh, practice to interrogate, to investigate, to explore materials and um, in, uh, uh, interrogate some of the issues that uh, she feels uh, strongly about. We're so lucky and privileged to have Odin from Yabatek to have a show, a solo show over here with us. 
and she has literally transformed the whole space, um, showing us about infinite space and time. So we're standing over here and you can interpret any way you want, but a lot of it is to do with Yoruba tradition and the feeling of space and the feeling of of the time never ending. So just infinite space, infinite time. relation to to the number nine being what it is it's a special number um, not just in in uh, uh, um, in mathematics but even in uh, mythology in my Yoruba culture in other cultures across the world there's something about the number that uh, sorts of heralds the end of something and but then it also signifies the beginning so in Instead of it being something that just rounds up, it starts again. It begins this cycle of, you know, progression. And, but progression in a way that you can keep tabs on what it is that is happening. Drawing, sculpture, installation, collage and mixed media, video and participatory intervention have been brought together in five new series in this exhibition. There are different aspects to this exhibition and for instance we're in the installation now which is very interactive uh, but there are other aspects to the show um, in my goings, uh, in my goings becoming collages, becoming videos and dealing with spaces, uh, something matrixal. It's a project of five different series uh, that works uh, between drawing, uh, sculpture, collage, installation, and video, and it's exploring concepts of uh, the unknown time and space and how we interact uh, it, with our existence. There are works such as Infinitum, Kenyon, Musing, Particles of Word, and The Nines. The artist talks about some of them which explores the matrix of the unseen and more. The room that we're in, the installation, uh, is called the nines, which is the number, and it's it deals specifically with with what I just discussed. And of course, you can see something that looks like a forest. It looks like you said you saw charcoal. Someone else said they saw paper. Someone else tells me they're seeing dead flowers. Everyone has something they see, which is exactly what matters. Uh, we have different perceptions, different orientations that we're coming from, that we used to engage the world around us. And coming into the dark space, which is what I've always loved to deal with, the dark space is very poetic. It's, it has no end, it has no beginning, it births things, it is both generative and degenerative. You come into a forest, we've been to many forests, and but when you go to the forest at night, it looks kind of like this. It's black, but then your mind tells you you're seeing green, you're seeing brown, all the colors come flooding in. And it's the same way how black does. It feeds you information from your imagination and from your memory. It's a matter of resonance. These images are continuous experimentation in articulating processes of existence and revealing the connectedness of shared experiences. It's actually more uh, images of things that are familiar. Huh? So what is familiar to you might not be the same thing that's familiar to someone else. You see something that you relate with and you immediately hold on to what your memory feeds you. Uh, but then to someone else they see something completely different. And this is a thing about space and how it can be very elusive in what it is that it generates. And the, its ability to morph and do that makes it very uh, a very good mechanism uh, for navigating yeah, our daily life. I have never, never experienced anything like this. This is so totally un un I wasn't prepared to be put in this world, and it is another world quite entirely. I've gone through an experience because for the moment I couldn't, I feel completely in 
is somewhere I can't explain. And I don't know how I got here and what's going to happen, what's going to be my experience after living here. Well, she has over here behind us a work which uses, you know, paper. It use, it, it, there are flowers over here, as you can see. There's charcoal. So it's things that are beginning to decompose, but then again, it has life again in the work. So it's all that question of the cycle of life and how it never ends. It's all about reflection. Everything I do, uh, most of the time, has something to do with about uh, with how people behave, how people think. How people behave and how people think is what makes the world what it is. It's what propels everything that happens around us. And most of the time, people act without reflection. Uh, they, they just go on and move in their theories of action without anything to hold them back but if they were to move back into their space uh, so many things that are the, the body has so much information that has been kept over the years not just the information that you you grew up with since you were born but you carry also information from your ancestors you know this is why we say DNA right uh, you carry information from eons ago uh, and reflection brings these things forward so the hope is that people reflect and make the world a better place. Concepts of space, overlapping realities and the intangible, leading to investigations of human behavioral tendencies, orientation and interaction explored through these works of art. Amazing works of art created there by Odun. Now we take a moment on the program. When we return, it's off to Ikorodu in Lagos to see how Faith Michael prepares her figurative forms. Details in a moment. Do stay with us. Our wordsmith for today is titled Chained by Wonder Dewdrops. The artwork is created by Kinsley Wafo. How I came to love him, I still can't remember well. I've become so addicted to him, like my whole life depends on him. I feel like he's the air I breathe, he's the water I drink, He's the food I eat. He's my heart and lungs. I've become his slave. I don't know who stole for him, that I was his shadow. Now he can do anything with me. As much as he beats me, I can't leave him. Where will I go when all my life's on him? He doesn't love me yet. I can't live without him. He has showed me the worst, yet I can't even make a step away from him. I chained myself in his prison, then threw away the keys. No one can even trace the spare key. I've desired to escape, but I can't. Maybe this is how it was meant to be. I knew myself well with him. I've lived in his web of poison. And here, I'll die a chained free soul. And these are the works of art you sent in recently. Let's begin with this one called Dangerous Beauty by Favor Williams is a pencil on paper drawing. And this piece called the Bulldog is a 100% iron metal work by Blessing EBA.
Against Your Fear, the second in the series, is an oil painting on canvas by Kingsley Mwafo. Then Onoha Columbus is asking everyone, what do you see? Especially when you look in the mirror. It's an oil on canvas work as well. Vivid Impressions, the first in the series, is an acrylic on canvas work capturing a mesmerizing array of emotions by Oyeni Oluwatobiloba. Then, what's cooking? That's what O.T. Emmanuel is asking, and little wonder especially because he's using cooking salt and food spices on blackboard to create this work of art. Then Riverside is an acrylic on canvas piece by Jerome Amadou. Monkey Post is an acrylic on canvas piece as well, done by Mazi Dennis. Then Happy Family, that's what Wilson Felix is saying, also with acrylic on canvas, with this lovely work of art. And those are the works of art you sent in recently. We really appreciate you for sending them in and being really creative about them. So we encourage you to keep them coming. Fast rising artist Faith Michael takes us through the process of creating her lovely works of art at her studio in Ikurudu. Frames, lots of it, are part of the work tools of most artists. Faith Michael is no exception. She begins from the basics, stretching the canvas. Measurements have to be taken in order to get the dimensions right. The graduate of the School of Art and Design, Auchi Polytechnic in Auchi Edo State, takes us into her world where she creates pop art painting with realistic depictions, mostly in figurative. I title it Retro. It's a kind of retrospect back to the olden days, our kind of musical lifestyle and the dress here, ranging from the afro to the colorful disco background, to the shoes, to the colors on the body. It tells more on African art and African music. So I try to create an impression stating out the Afro beats in the 90s, 80s, 70s. I base mainly in figures, yeah. I do composition, portraitures, and I do the pop art technique. Originally, pop arts are known to be vibrant and colorful. Initially, I started with vibrant colors, but as I grew into it, I needed to create something distinctive. 
So I started introducing muted but conversational colors in my works. Like you don't have to see my work vibrant, but you still see the use of colors there. With a natural dexterity in brushwork, this artist illuminates the voices of the subject on her canvas with emotional scenes using paintings to tell the compelling stories of the man on the streets. As you can see, this is a figurative expression of a child in an adult shoes. Naturally, it is seen that these shoes are not his size. And you know, in the society we are today, people tend to judge people, not hearing from their own perspective, but they talk about what they feel and what they think of others, not putting themselves in the position of the other person to think or say, okay, why has this person done this thing? Why is this person acting like this? We live in a judgmental society and I try to depict it in my painting. If I were in your shoes or if you were in my shoe, would you judge me? In art, I think there is no specification of being a female or being a male. What they want to see is what you can produce. That is it. That's what the society wants to see, what you can produce. If you know you are a female, then you should have gone, gone to something else. Yes, go to other departments where you think you can explore your feminism or being a female there. But in art department, they want to see what you do. And that's why I didn't stop at where I was taught. I was, I was focused, okay, let me compete with them. Not like I'm competing with them, but I'm competing with myself to be a better person, to be that artist. Since I wasn't gifted in art, I was just determined to prove to the world that even without the talent, but my passion for it was enough reason to set out every day to the studio and do something meaningful. And when I get into the studio, uh, I just look at my works and be like, I'm grateful for the people I have behind me, people I have in front of me, people I'm looking up to, everybody around me, I'm grateful because at a point I thought I could not do it. But when I realized and I saw people doing it, I, I just know that, okay, it's in me, just something I need to push out further. Her art is an intriguing blend of experimental technique, conversational palette, personal relationship, existence, experience, reality, and narratives. I love capturing backstories of creatives as it really makes you appreciate the grind and sweat that goes into creating these works of art. So you can look at them a bit differently. Next week on Art House. As contemporary artist and tutor Funsho Modula turned 60, he has organized an exhibition titled Deep in Cultures in Lagos to celebrate this milestone. The fourth edition of Lagos Biennial Exhibition of Contemporary Art by Akete Foundation. Then we look at the challenges the AAF is having with this year's Lagos Photo Festival. We encourage you to keep liking, sharing and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's Art House this week. Thank you so much for being great company and do continue to interact with us 
on our various social media platforms. I'm Melinda Akinlami, wishing you a lovely day.